Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to bring out the, um, the truth. Who was the one said 1918 Jesus was going to return to examine all religions and he found no truth in them except Jehovah's Witnesses. And they were the only ones that was preaching the truth. So Christ chose them. Now, I'm going to play a talk that I recorded from the Bible students. It will prove Charles T. Russell was the one predicted about 1918 but here's the question did he say from the information that I found did he predicted that Christ was going to return in 1918 I will let you determine that for yourself and we'll get more deeper into the real truth about 1918 and at the end, we're going to have a little pop quiz. So Jehovah's Witnesses, if you want to hear the truth about, uh, about 1918, just listen to this little bit of audio. And I imagine it's going to have your curiosity up about what was supposed to happen in 1918 that never happened. So let's go to the audio. Okay, what you just heard, he predicted 1918, but this brother did not say what was supposed to be predicted in 1918, because if he did, those who was there would have got up and left and never returned to the Bible students movement. But I did some research and found out what was supposed to happen in 1918. After the death of, of course, Charles T. Russell, and you see the uh, portions of his studies in the scriptures reflecting new beliefs that 1914 were merely the beginning of of the Gentile times. Now, let's go down here. In one of his books that he was just about was going to finish till he died in 1916. It's called The Finished Mystery. In the year 1918, when God destroys churches wholesale and the churches members by millions, it shall be that any that escape shall come to the works of Pastor Russell to learn the meaning of the downfall of Christianity. So all this was supposed to happen in 1914. Churches were supposed to be destroyed. And false religion was supposed to be destroyed in 1918. 
that was supposed to what was supposed to have been happening in nineteen eighteen, Jehovah Witnesses. This is the finished mystery. In this book, it has lots and lots of truth about 1918. So I'm going to br bring this out a little bit later on in the video. This is what it looks like. And down here on the bottom, you'll see... International Bible Student Association. That's what they was called. Now, you notice up here, you can see it's talk, talk about that same information what I just read about the year of 1918. God was going to destroy churches and the members by millions if they didn't get out and go to, to the Bible students movement of Pastor Russell's teaching to learn that they was in false religion. And this is a picture that I found that has nothing to do with uh, of a 1918, but I'm using it as a reference. So I say uh, these churches here, 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 resemble all religion churches in 1914 all the way up to 1918, and they were supposed to be destroyed in 1918, but none of them was destroyed. No churches were destroyed. So, this was what was supposed to happen by Charles T. Russell's predictions. And it, it never happened. So, that's the reason the, the guy didn't tell them what was supposed to happen of Charles T. Russell's predictions. Otherwise, like I said, those people would have got up and left. What really happened... It was to the religions. In 1918, something did happen to the Watchtower and Watchtower headquarters. So, apparently you can say they was shut down, uh, spiritual, destroyed. Why? Because they took information from the book for that finish, finished mystery, and they put stuff in there that put a uh, bunch of people in jail, which Jehovah's Witness know a little bit about the history. Nine months after Judge Rockford and his associates was sentenced in, in jail, prison, with the, with the war passed on March the 21st, 1919, the Pierce Court ordered to bail for the eight men defendants. On March 26th, they were released in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, there was eight men, $10,000 each. $10,000 each. Okay, people at that time did not make a lot of money. So, uh, so you're looking at $8,000. No, $80,000 that came out of the Bible students' money to bail all these peop people out of jail. Out of jail. Unbelievable. These was the men, and the second one to the left is Judge Rockefeller. There he is, and there's his fingerprints. Now, I called Kim, and she gave me more information to prove that the doors of the watchtower was completely closed. So, we're going to turn 
to that page and we do something different here. Okay, this information is on page 577 of the Proclaimers book and we'll take it from there. But then, during a period of intense persecution in 1918, while officials of the society were unjustly imprisoned, their headquarters, Laka Ed in Brooklyn, New York, was dismantled. The plates for printing were destroyed. The greatly reduced staff moved the office back to Pittsburgh to the third floor of the building at 119 Federal Street. Would this bring to an end their producing of Bible literature? Should they do their own printing? After the release of the society's president, J. F. Rutherford, and his associates from prison, the Bible students assembled at Cedar Point, Ohio, in 1919. They considered what God had permitted to occur during the preceding year and what his word indicated that they should be doing during the days ahead. Announcement was made that a new magazine, 7% E Golden Age, was to be published as an instrument to use in pointing people to God's kingdom as mankind's only hope, as it had done in the past. The Societe arranged for a calmer shale firm to do the printing, but times had changed. There were labor difficulties in the printing industry and problems in the paper market. A more dependable arrangement was needed. The brothers prayed about the matter and watched for the Lord's leadings. First of all, where should they locate the society's offices? Should they move the headquarters back to Brooklyn? The society's board of directors considered the matter, and a committee was appointed to check into the situation. Brother Rutherford instructed C.A. Wise, the society's vice president, to go to Brooklyn to see about reopening Bethel and renting premises where the society could begin printing operations. Desirous of knowing what course God would bless, Brother Rutherford said, Go and see whether it is the Lord's will for us to return back to Brooklyn. Okay, from here, it proves that New York headquarters was completely shut down. Or in this case, you could say it was fallen. It fell by Charles T. Russell's um, predictions. So, what did we learn from the finished mystery book? Well, I'm going to show you more stuff that was in this book and the page numbers and you can judge for yourself. One, the remaining anointed would be all taken from the earth to heaven in spring night. 1818. Did that happen, Jehovah Witnesses? No. Demons will invade the minds of all churchgoers in 1918, leading to their destruction. No. Because a bunch of us would have been de dead, our grandparents would have been dead, so none of us would have been born today. And also, the one we read about uh, on page 485 also the year 1918 when God destroyed all churches the wholesales the church members by millions that never happened so what did we learn Jehovah Witnesses that these men should have went to jail and the reason they went to jail because they had to rip out some pages from that book because they was telling their members that do not go to the army or the navy because uh, you're not allowed to kill people. So these books was keeping the brothers for uh, serving their country. Now, these men knows the truth about the history, and it really, Joe witnesses, they should be the ones be going to jail, because 1918, Christ never returned. There's your proof. So thank you. Have a nice day.